The lesson from God's Word for our sermon today is from the Old Testament, from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter here, chapter 3. Here, wise King Solomon reflects on life. He says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. This is God's word. Dear friends, and especially you, the, the family of, of Bob Turk, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. I think that Bob's life reflected that pretty well. If there is a time for everything, Bob Turk did just about everything. Is that fair to say? In fact, we could go down Solomon's list of things and we could match it up with what I know of Bob's life. Let's just try a couple of them up. A time to plant and a time to uproot. Bob, the master gardener, sure knew what that was like. A time to tear down and a time to build. If, if I remember right, your family went through some pretty big hurricanes in Corpus Christi, didn't you? Tearing down, and building back up. A time to tear and a time to mend. Those are just perfect words for any handyman like Bob, right? Time for war and a time for peace. And I know that Bob was proud of his service in the military. And you can go on and on. I, I bet in, in your family there's been times of mourning and times of dancing. There's been times of laughing and times of weeping. And if you look at the life that God gave to, to Bob, Bob had a pretty blessed life. And he was filled with all sorts of things. He, he got to experience just about every time. And there's a time for everything. In fact, from what I've gotten to know about Bob, I think that Bob could have added some more times to Solomon's list. Do you think there's a few things that didn't make it into the Bible? Like a time to kill rattlesnakes. A time to make your own gunpowder. Somehow those didn't make it into the Bible. A time to blow things up. <laughs> and a time to put out the fires that you started when you were blowing things up. Solomon didn't include that one either. A time to hunt. And a time to hang antlers all over your walls and then give some to your children so they can hang them on their walls too. And what I've learned about Bob, I... I think the world might be a safer place today. <laughs> At least all the animals are safer than they were before. And it's a time for everything. But this is what I want you to notice today. It's not enough. It's still not enough. Bob lived this life blessed from God that was filled with family and adventure and hard work and excitement, and yet, it's still not enough. If it were, you wouldn't be sad today. Yet, as I've heard you talk, and I haven't heard anybody say something like, yeah, that was long enough with Bob. It's good that he's gone. I haven't heard anybody say that. Instead, I see tears in your eyes. 
Because as long a life as Bob lived, it's still, it's still not enough. You can live to be 82 years old. He could have lived to be 102 years old, but death always leaves us wanting more. Death always leaves dreams unfulfilled and plans unfinished, and it leaves us thinking there's got to be something more. And that's exactly what Solomon is trying to teach us from God. He says, God has made everything beautiful in its time, but even if you pack all of those times into one human life, it's still not going to feel like it's enough. And King Solomon explains why. He says, God has also set eternity in the human heart. How long does every human heart really want to live? For eternity. For eternity. You can pack all the times of life into a life that's long by human standards, and yet when it's done, it's always going to seem like it's too short because that's not how long we were made to live. Once had a, a man, maybe about Bob's age, say something interesting to me. He said, Pastor, I still feel like I'm a, a boy inside. I feel like my soul hasn't gotten any older. Isn't that the truth? It's because we weren't made to die. We were made to live forever in life. It always leaves us wanting more. And I bet you know that. That's why those tears are in your eyes. Because you want something more. It's not just at funerals, though. It's all those frustrations at work. It's that aching feeling that you, you just feel inside of you. It's, it's the daydreaming about everything other than the life that you actually have. Because we're always wanting something more. It doesn't matter how long you get to live on earth. It doesn't matter how long your loved ones get to live on earth. When death comes, it's always going to come too soon because in your heart, in your soul, you were made for eternity. God has set eternity in the human heart. So how come we don't get to live forever? Well, it's because of sin. That's what the Bible tells us. God created Adam and Eve to live forever. But then they sinned. And the wages of sin is death. And to this day, all people sin. And if you ever want proof of that, just look at how many people die. Everybody does. And you know, it's not just because our hearts and our kidneys and our lungs, they wear out. It's not just because that's the way it is. You know, there are things that don't wear out. Rocks don't wear out. People tell us that all the plastic we have today, that's never going to wear out, right? Why is it that our human bodies actually wear out? It's because of sin. Sin makes people die. And if we were to go back over Solomon's list of all of these times, we would notice that so many of the times that we have to experience as human beings, so many of those times are the result of sin. Because of sin, people die. Because of sin, people kill. Because of sin, people tear down. Because of sin, people need to be healed. Because of sin, people mourn and people weep. Because of sin, people hate. Because of sin, there's war. And it's all because of sin. And as Bob reflected on his life, I know that Bob realized that he was a sinner. As hard as he worked, as good as he was with his hands, he realized that there was one thing that he could never fix. The one thing he couldn't fix was, was himself. It, this is why Jesus came. Jesus came not to help those who help themselves, like people so often say today. That's foolish. Jesus came to help people who can't help themselves. Jesus came not to give a little boost to all the good people so we can make it into heaven. No, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost like you and me. That's what Jesus came to do. As Bob reflected on his life, he needed to hear over and over again that his sins were forgiven because Jesus Christ died on the cross to take away the sins of the world. Bob needed to be reminded that whatever guilt he felt in his heart Jesus had taken it away. Bob needed to hear that as out of control as his life seemed, especially in these last months when he's been sick, as out of control as his life seemed, his life was still going perfectly according to God's plan for him. Bob needed to know that even when he faced death, 
there was something more. And do you know where Bob found all of those things? In Jesus. He found all of those things in Jesus because that's where you find eternity. Every human heart is longing for eternity. Every single one of us is. But not every human heart is going to receive eternal life. There's only one way. It's through faith in Jesus as our Savior. You know the verse from the Bible, John 3, 16. You know how that goes. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Eternity is God's gift to those who believe in Jesus. Life is not about how strong you are. It's about how strong Jesus is. Life is not about how good you've been. It's about how good Jesus is. Eternal life is God's gift by grace to those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. And that's why you can be confident where Bob is today. He's in heaven. Not because he earned it or deserved it. Nobody does. But because he trusted in Jesus as his Savior. It's a verse in the New Testament that puts it so beautifully. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9. Bob's in heaven today. It means he's not sick anymore. It means he doesn't hurt anymore. It means he'll never have another tear in his eye because that's God's promise. In heaven there is no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. This is where you find eternity. You find it in Jesus. I hope you realize that's what your heart is longing for too. I know you are. You are longing for good things that never end. You are longing to, to feel loved and cherished all the time. You are longing for a place that you can call home forever. And it's so hard to find those things here on earth. In fact, you could do what Bob did and fill your life with all sorts of things and they'll give you a little taste. All the different times of life, they give us just a little taste of what eternity is like, but it's still not going to fill you. I bet you've noticed that. You can search in work or in sports or in relationships, but you're not going to find it. You're not going to be filled the way that your heart longs to be filled because the place that you find eternity, it's, it's in Jesus. Do you believe that? God wants you to. The birds didn't. Not like the birds outside. The birds. You know what I'm talking about? You realize that these words from the book of Ecclesiastes are a number one billboard music hit. You know that, right? Solomon's lyrics from 3,000 years ago have made it to number one on the charts. In 1965, the birds took Solomon's words and turned them into a song, which was called Turn, Turn, Turn. And if you listen to that song, you'll notice something. You can listen to that song and realize that the birds, they were hoping for something. They were longing for something. And they believed that that something could be found through world peace. That's what they made their song about. The time for war and a time for peace. 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 They thought that if they could somehow bring about world peace, then people's hearts would be filled. And Were they right? No. Because true peace isn't something that, that you find on earth. In fact, it's something that there's another time for. You said there's a time for everything, right? This is why there's a time for people to die. Because for you and me to really have the true peace that God wants us to have in Jesus, what it takes is it, it takes dying. It takes leaving this world. Jesus decided that it was time for Bob to leave this world of tears and to go home to heaven. Jesus decided that it was time for Bob to actually get to experience eternity. There is a time for everything, and one of those things is something that it only happens after you die. 
It was time for Bob to receive the one thing that you can't ever receive on earth, and that's, that's eternity with Jesus. There's a time for everything. And Bob was ready. Oh, he, he loved you. He wasn't looking forward to leaving you, but Bob was ready. This last Sunday, I got to visit Bob in the ICU at the hospital. He was in rough shape, but he, but he could actually hear that day. He was awake. And so I read to him the words of Psalm 23, which we heard earlier in our service. And right in the middle of Psalm 23 is that beautiful verse, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And I I read that to Bob and I, I said something like, Bob, even in the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to be afraid because you're with me. And, and he said something. Some of you were there. He said, I'm not afraid. And that's the last thing that I heard him say. I'm not afraid. See, because he was ready. He was ready for the last time. The time when God takes us home to heaven, he made it. He made it there. By God's grace, through faith in Jesus, he made it. And you know, one day you're going to make it too. One day, by God's grace, through faith in Jesus as your Savior, you're going to make it there too. That last time is coming for you too. And until it comes, notice how Solomon gives us some advice about how to, to live our lives on earth. It's the last couple verses of our lesson. He says, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good as they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. When I hear those words, I, I can't help but think of this is kind of how Bob's life played out. He ate and he drank and he found satisfaction in his toil and his hard work. And this is a gift of God. And yet all the while, he, he trusted in this. It's what the Lord does that endures forever. What we do, that's not going to last. But what Jesus did, that lasts forever. What we accomplish, it's not going to last. But what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross, that's what endures forever. We can travel all the places we want to, but our, our longing heart is never going to be fulfilled until Jesus takes us to that one place where we're going to feel like we're at home forever. There is a time for everything. There's a time for war and a time for peace. There's a time to live and there's a time to die. There's a time for Jesus to take us home and give us what our longing hearts always want and that's eternity and Bob's there. He's there. It's a time for everything. Amen. Say a prayer. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, we, we praise you today for the life that you gave to our brother in Christ, Bob Turk. As we think about him today, we, we think about how his life was full of so many things. You blessed him with so many times, and so many of them were good. Time with his wife and children, time at work, time in the military, time tinkering with his hands like he loved to do, time hunting, time at church, so many different times. And yet, Lord, we know that Bob wasn't filled completely with any of those times because you'd set eternity on his heart. And so this last week, you decided that it was time for Bob to experience the final time to die and to rise, to be with you in heaven. We're thankful that Bob today gets to have that longing for eternity fulfilled in his heart. We're thankful that you've taken away every tear from his eyes. He gets to live with you forever. Dear Jesus, comfort us with your words of promise. Comfort us with the message that one day our time will come too, that through faith in you we'll be reunited with you and Bob and all your people in, in glory everlasting no matter what time we're in today in our lives, help us to put our trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen.